Thank you. The next item of business is consideration of business motion number 15851. In the name of Joe Fitzpatrick, on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau, setting out a revision to the business programme for this week. Any member who wishes to speak against the motion should press the request to speak button now. And I call on Joe Fitzpatrick to move motion number 15851. Formally moved. No member has asked to speak against the motion, therefore I now put the question to the Chamber. The question is that motion number 15851, in the name of Joe Fitzpatrick, be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. The motion is therefore agreed to. The next item of business is consideration of business motion number 15840. In the name of Joe Fitzpatrick, on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau, setting out a timetable for the Stage 3 consideration of the Land and Buildings Transaction Tax Amendment Scotland Bill, any member who wishes to speak against this motion should press the request speak button now. And I call on Joe Fitzpatrick to move motion number 15840. Moved. No member has asked to speak against the motion, therefore I now put the question to the Chamber. The question is that motion number 15840, in the name of Joe Fitzpatrick, be agreed to. Are we all agreed? The motion is therefore agreed to. The next item of business is consideration of business motion number 15839. In the name of Joe Fitzpatrick, on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau, setting out a timetable for the Stage 3 consideration of the Higher Education Governance Scotland Bill. Any member who wishes to speak against the motion should press the request speak button now. And I call on Joe Fitzpatrick to move motion number 15839. Moved. No member has asked to speak against the motion, therefore I now put the question to the Chamber. The question is that motion number 15839 in the name of Joe Fitzpatrick, be agreed to. Are we all agreed? The motion is therefore agreed to. We now move to topical questions. Question number one, Christina McKelvey. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what it is doing to mark International Women's Day. Cabinet Secretary Alex Neil. Hey, Presiding Officer, the Scottish Government will be involved in more events than ever to mark this year's International Women's Day. A celebration started here in the Parliament on Saturday, the 5th of March, when the First Minister gave the keynote address at the Scottish Women's Convention's annual event and will carry on for most of this week, with the First Minister speaking today at the Scottish Women's Aid Conference. Also today, the Cabinet Secretary for Culture, Europe and External Affairs is participating at the Lord Provost of Glasgow's conference, co-hosted with UNICEF. From Ayrshire to Clyde Bank, ministers will be sharing platforms and attending events that showcase what progress has been made towards gender parity, but also highlighting where we must do more. All here will agree that the work to end gender inequality is not just for one day a year, but is part of our government's core ambitions for Scotland as we pledge for parity. Christina McKelvey. Can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer and welcome all of those events because they all highlight things that we all believe in. Could the Cabinet Secretary maybe give us an update on what the Scottish Government is doing to ensure that women are properly represented in leading roles throughout not just the public sector but the private sector in Scotland too? Cabinet Secretary. Presiding Officer, as the Member knows, uh, both in terms of public boards but also in terms of uh, the private and third sector, we are doing everything we can to encourage gender balance on boards and, of course, 50-50 by 2020 is a key part of the Government's strategy. Although we don't have the legislative power uh, to force private sector organisations to engage in 50-50, nevertheless, uh, as a major user of private services, we are using all influence we can to try to encourage companies a, to do it, and B, then reap the benefits of having 50-50 by 2020. Christina McKelvey. I'm sure the Cabinet Secretary will agree with me that not just about roles in public and private sector, but one of the main issues is still the gender inequality pay gap. And I wonder if you could give us an update on the progress that the Scottish Government is taking to close the gender pay gap. Cabinet Secretary. Presiding Officer, again in the public sector, the main area outstanding is in relation to equal pay in local authorities. And there are still four or five local authorities in Scotland who have not finally settled their equal pay claims. And my priority as the overall Cabinet Secretary with responsibility for local authorities is to encourage them to complete the settlement of these claims as soon as possible. Because I know in North Lanarkshire alone, for example, there are over 4,000 people, mainly women, who have still got their equal pay claim outstanding. And I think, given the time it has taken since the original Equal Pay Act was passed and since the existing uh, negotiations were held 
about 12, 15 years ago, that there's no excuse now for any outstanding claims still not to be settled in this day and age. Rhoda Grant. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'm sure the Cabinet Secretary is as shocked as I am by the University College Union's report highlighting gender, the gender pay gap in our colleges and universities. And sadly for me, the worst figure comes from the University of Highlands and Islands, which shows male lecturers are paid £18,637 more than their female equivalent. This is unacceptable in any walk of life, but in, especially in our publicly funded institutions. Can I ask what the Cabinet Secretary is going to do about it? Cabinet Secretary. Presiding Officer, uh, throughout the public sector, we want to see equal pay implemented, and that includes in the local authority sector, as I said, but also in the academic sector, both universities and colleges as well. And we'll, we'll do everything within our power to try to encourage and ensure that those funded through the public sector, through the taxpayer, actually fulfil a requirement of equal pay for equal work. Clear Baker. Thank you, President Officer. I'd like to support the comments already made in the Chamber about inequalities facing women at home and abroad, but we need light as well as shade. And I would like to highlight a report that's published today that talks about underrepresentation of women in Scottish theatres. Um, does the Cabinet Secretary agree with me that our cultural life and expression are important as to how we see ourselves? And will the Scottish Government support efforts for greater transparency and analysis of our understanding of women's role in, within the creative sector? Cabinet Presiding officer, I absolutely empathise with the comments made by the member. Clearly, there is no case for uh, not having women on an equal footing with men when it comes to any aspect of our arts and culture. And indeed, since arts and culture are supposed to reflect our society, it is particularly important to make sure that women are properly represented, as indeed it is to make sure that any minority group are properly represented, but women should absolutely be uh, represented in arts and culture, including in the theatre and in television and in radio and in a whole range of other media we have available in a modern society because that reflects modern society where women actually make up more than 50% of the population in Scotland. Malcolm Chisholm. The most terrible consequences of gender inequality is domestic abuse and other forms of violence against women. So when the First Minister addresses the Scottish Women's Aid Conference uh, imminently, I think, this afternoon, uh, will she uh, uh, respond to the report that's come out from Scottish Women's Aid this week about domestic abuse and homelessness? And, and has he, as the Minister with ultimate responsibility for housing, looked at the issues in that report and will he uh, respond positively to them? So we'll be taking our time to look at the uh, conclusions and recommendations in that report as well as the analysis and clearly there's some very disturbing uh, research in that report which needs to be addressed and we will certainly be responding to the report very positively and doing whatever we can to try to ensure that all of these issues are properly addressed in terms of uh, women and in terms of homelessness and of course the impact on the wider family, particularly children. Thank you. That ends topical questions. The next item of business.